In my very first devlog, I mentioned that I so far have released two games on Steam. I didn't focus too much on marketing or optimizing for engagement, SEO or any such stuff. Those games were mostly me getting my feet wet, gaining experience with how making and releasing games worked. But for my upcoming game, I'm planning to actually have more people than just my mom play it. The first step to achieve this is, of course, to make a good game. We'll see how that goes. But the second part is actually having people know about the game. Now, I am doing all of this indie dev stuff in my free time, so my marketing budget is just around 20 cents and a box of Tic Tacs. So how do I do it without having to spend a bunch of money? After doing some research, one of the most important topics that kept getting brought up for games released on Steam was the Steam page. Apparently having a good Steam page will help gain a lot of wishlists, and it's worth having as many wishlists as possible way before the actual release of the game, as Steam's recommendation engine prioritizes this metric quite highly when promoting your game. This is why, even though the game is nowhere near a state that even remotely resembles a finished product, I'm setting up a Steam page. Before anything, the first step is coming up with the final name. You may have noticed that I only ever referred to my game as my game. This changes today. I'm proud to announce my game's name is now officially, drum rolls please, Gridlocked. Of course, this shouldn't come as a big surprise if you read the video's full title. So with that out of the way, let's dive into Steamworks. This is the interface used by all developers and publishers to configure their games on Steam. You can see my previous two games listed here. I think many people don't know much about the behind the scenes of Steam, so today I thought it would be fun to show you the whole journey it takes to set up a new game on Steam. The very first step for adding a new game on Steam is... Paying Valve 100 bucks. Then you name your game and are presented with a big set of menus and options. On the right you see a checklist. Ignore the already completed items, I forgot to hit record earlier, trust me, they were unchecked. This is probably as good spot as any to shout out Jonas's video about store page optimization, where he's joined by Chris, a professional indie game marketeer, who shares a bunch of useful tips on getting the most out of your Steam page. I'll attempt to use all of his hints setting up the page for Gridlock, but go ahead and check it out if you are interested in a more detailed dive into this topic. Let's start going through the checklist. First up, basic info. Here we can modify the app type, name, developer and publisher names, as well as link websites and social media accounts that will appear on the page. We can add search keywords that specify what platforms our game will support and what are the minimum and recommended system requirements. Next, we can specify a release date. This doesn't have to be a real date, which it won't be since I have no clue when the game will actually be finished. Instead, we can just put some fun placeholder text. Next, we can specify what languages the game supports, be it UI text, audio or subtitles. For now, it's just English, but I'll probably be adding translations down the line. We can select what kind of multiplayer the game has, only single player in this case. We check all the Steam features the game supports, things like achievements, cloud saves, level editor, Steam Workshop, and so on. Genres is a weird one. These are all the high-level genres Steam offers you and you must choose one as your primary one. I can't really tell what genre a city-building puzzle game would fit into. Simulation because we are simulating traffic. Adventure because it has walking around and dialogue choices. Casual because it's a puzzle game or strategy. Do I check the racing because it has a racing minigame? And what the heck should I select as the primary genre? Guess I'll just have to go with the indie genre cop-out, even though indie in no way qualifies as a genre. Okay, but at least the tagging system is quite robust, and we can define up to 25 unique tags, prioritizing the ones we feel are most important. Steam will use these tags to group the game with other similarly tagged games, and recommend gridlock to players that enjoy such similar games. 
I may end up tweaking these as time goes by, but for now, this is the tag list I have. Finishing off the basics tab are controller support, none for this game, legal disclaimers, and support contact info. I'll get back to the description tab a bit later, I'll leave it for last as it is probably the most important one. The ratings tab is for age rating related stuff, nothing interesting there. The early access tab contains the list of questions you probably saw on the steam pages of early access games. I'm not planning on releasing gridlocked in early access at this point, so we can ignore it for now. Let's continue with the graphical assets tab. Every Steam game has to have a professional looking logo to have any chance of gaining attention. For my limited budget, they spent going on Fiverr and hiring artists. Few days and around 60 bucks later, I have these two logos I can use. Steam requires different sizes of so called capsules to be uploaded. These are used in different parts of the store, like in search results, recommendation feeds, promotions, the user's library, and so on. This is also where we can upload and reorder screenshots. In the library assets part, we can upload the images used specifically for users who own the game. With the built-in placement tool, we can control and even visualize how our logo and background will look like on different window sizes. In the special settings section, we can link DLC and demos, or set up the new playtest feature. For now, I'll be interested in having a demo for Gridlocked some months before release. For this, Steam will basically create a new app that is linked to the original one and copy most of its settings. I'm not gonna go into detail here, most of the settings actually are the same. Moving on from the store admin to the app data admin settings, here most of the stuff will be needed when I actually upload the game build. The only thing required for the store page for now is adding a client icon. Finally, it's time for the last missing requirement, the store page descriptions. You may know every Steam game has two descriptions. A short one that you see on the store page here, or when you hover over game's capsule in most places in the store. And the long, about this game, description that can contain formatting, images, animated GIFs, links, and so on. From what I've learned, having animated GIFs showing the unique elements of your game is very effective. So I went ahead and made a few of those. I tried to write the best summary of the game I could, hopefully it will work. But keep in mind, this and everything else I covered in this video can be changed at any time, even after the store page goes live. Speaking of which, I think it's time to officially submit the store page for Gridlocked for review. It shouldn't take more than a few days to get approved, unless I've made some big oopsie along the way. Three days later. Luckily, no issues were found, we are now ready to publish the store page for Gridlocked. Once I hit this button, it will go live on Steam and can be viewed, searched for, and most importantly, the game can be wishlisted. As I mentioned before, wishlists are one of the biggest ways to market a game on Steam. If a game manages to accumulate a fair amount of them before release, Steam will start recommending it more frequently to players. This is why I ask you now, if you enjoyed this video or are interested in the game I'm making, please check the link in the video description and wishlist Gridlocked. It would really mean a lot. And hey, if you're feeling even more generous, why not give this video a like too and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time.